you kind of superimposed on that. So let me kind of see if I can clarify that for you. So from the chest wall, there we had our internal thoracic artery. We're going to have the internal thoracic vein. And that's going to drain up, uh, go up, and uh, drain into either the brachiocephalic the trunk or the subclavian. We're going to take it directly to the subclavian. Now, where did our posterior intercostal arteries come from? Uh, oh. Posterior of the aorta, the thoracic uh, component of the descending aorta. So our posterior intercostal veins are going, there's no, there's no vena cava behind the heart. All right, so we have to come up with some other system. And so I'm going to put <coughs> over here on this side a similar drawing. This is anterior view. I'm going to try to superimpose them like they are on that diagram. Here would be the posterior view. Not from the back, but through to the back. That makes sense. We're removing the heart. Or we'll look through the heart. So here's superior vena cava again. And we have the, the heart resting on the diaphragm. And the inferior vena cava is coming up from the abdominal wall. Yes. So, starting in the abdominal cavity, we have veins that pass up the posterior abdominal wall. They're again along the uh, wall, muscle wall of the posterior abdominal cavity. And they're going to receive lumbar veins. Remember the lumbar arteries? Oh, shit. They're carrying blood up to the heart. So I'll label them in just a moment. So these are, at this point, known as ascending lumbar. I'm going to put that in parentheses because I don't ask you to know that. Draining into them are lumbar veins. So this is a posterior. It's not a posterior view. It's all the organs are taken out, and we're looking at through it anterior, but it's along the posterior wall of the abdomen and the chest cavity. So superior vena cava, inferior vena cava. Now, as we'll see when we get to the inferior vena cava, we still have lumbar veins that can drain into the inferior vena cava. Okay, but I'm, we'll get to that later. So at this point, once it gets up into the chest wall, these are now going to receive the intercostals. And on the right side, this vessel drains into the superior vena cava. So along the posterior chest wall, this is receiving posterior intercostal veins. And 
on the left side, this ascending lumbar reaches the thoracic area, crosses over behind the heart, and drains into this vessel, which in the chest wall is identified as the zygote vein. So on the right side, it's the azygous. Let me make this a little bit higher here. Not picking up any thoracic, not picking up any intercostal. the accessory, sorry, this is called the azygous vein. Again, hemi azygous. And this is the accessory hemi azygous. Hello. I once had a I once had a, um, was teaching at the medical school and one of the professors lecturing on the thoracic system said there are four birds in the thoracic cavity. There is the azygous, the hemiazygous, the accessory hemiazygous, and the thoracic duct. Yes, we'll get to the immune system. <laughs> and the students had to write as part of their exam on the thoracic cavity she was an essay, and so this one student, it happened to be the second or third time he had taken gross anatomy, starts out his essay with, in the thoracic cavity there are four birds. <laughs> I'm going, really? That was just a way to remember it. Okay, so yes. Does the accessory attach to the hemi? Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So I'll put a dotted blue line there. Sometimes it just starts off on its own. Yes, it runs right along the chest wall, so it's behind the lungs and outside the parietal pleura. <coughs> question? Did you have a question? question? Okay, so on this diagram, you're looking at the hemiozygous here, and the azygous crossing into superior vena cava. Here's the accessory hemiozygous. Did someone else have a question? Catherine. Yes. This one right here? This was part of the accessory, part of the hemiozygous going into a zygous. So if I say trace a drop of blood from the front of the It's going behind it, so these really should be dotted lines. So if I were to say trace a drop of blood from the left posterior chest wall to the heart, then you would go posterior intercostal vein to the hemiozygous vein to the azygous vein to the superior vena cava. All right. Now, if we look at the wire model, so here it's labeled, here it's not. We're looking from the back, so this would be the right side, this would be the left side. So here is the azygous coming up and going into the superior vena cava. Here is the hemiozygous coming over crossing and joining into the azygous and the accessory hemiozygous going up to the brachiocephalic vein. Now when we look at the superior vena cava on our heart model, this vessel was always present. The azygous was always present. So here's superior vena cava. Two branches. Right brachiocephalic, left brachiocephalic vein. Look at this little one right here. That's the azygous. Draining into the superior vena cava. Okay? So the superior vena cava receives blood from three vessels the two brachiocephalic veins, and the azygous vein. 
Those three come into the uh, superior vena cava. And the, I'm sorry, two brachiocephalic veins. Two brachiocephalic veins and the azygous vein. Azygous. So the superior, superior vena cava receives it from two brachiocephalic and azygous. Seriously. <laughs> All right, so let's stop there, take a 10 minute break, and when we come back, we'll do the abdominal um, cavity. There are, we have only, we lose one vein and one artery, we don't have a celiac trunk, we gain the portal vein, and then only two vein, new veins in the lower extremity. Everything else you already know. You already know. Anything else is named for an artery that it travels alongside or shared. Okay, so take a break into 10 minutes. Yeah.